I welcome you, boys. Welcome you back. Uh, we are discussing current and electricity, most important questions. And uh, during this class, we will study about some of the most important electric questions as well. Here it is: a heavy-duty battery of a truck maintains a current of three ampere for twenty-four hours. Three ampere current for twenty-four hours. How much flow from the battery during this time? How much charge flows from the battery during this time? Now look at you are giving how much current is maintained three amperes time twenty four hours and normally we convert this time into second by multiplying it with three six zero zero seconds. And you are asked to calculate time. This is the most another most important question uh, to understand if the time through which the charge is passed is the time is given, and how much current was maintained. That current is also given. Then you can calculate the number of the charges by because this is the definition of the current I that is equal to Q divided by T, and this Q charge. If you know how much current passes through how much time during the time interval is given, or you know the time through which the amount of the current which passes, then you can calculate the how many charges were passing. So the same technique is used. That is Q. That is equal to I T, and this is the value of the current which we have passed during this time, and we have multiplied this time. Uh, with the number of hours through which is it has passed and converted into second, so here it is for two five two five nine two zero zero coulombs. These are the number of charges which have passed for uh, twenty four hours when the current is maintained at three ampere. So when the current has uh, was maintained for uh, twenty four hours and uh, three ampere current was maintained for twenty four hours. Then we were asked to calculate the number of the charges, and here are the number of the charges. So it is 2.592 multiplied by 10 to the power 5 coulombs. These are the number of charges which have passed. Uh, so it means this is a type of problem. Whenever we are given some amount of the uh, current, that is amount of the current passing through how much time you are already given, then you can calculate how much how much charges have passed. Through the conductor, with the help of the battery. So this is the more another important question to understand. If you look at as the charge flowing from the battery in 24 hour will be 2.59 multiplied 10 to the power 5 coulombs. So this is the technique which you use to calculate the number of charges passing through a conductor, which is connected with a battery. The only you need to know is time. To uh, how much time it has taken to pass, and how much current was passing during that time, then you, you can calculate the number of the charges which have passed. Uh, thank you very much. And for the next uh, today's question is why analyzing a circuit in the internal resistance of the EMF source are ignored? Why we ignore the internal resistance of the circuit? Why? By analyzing a circuit, the internal resistance of the EMF source are ignored. Why? This is another most important question to understand. What's the reason why we ignore the internal resistance of a EMF source? Generally, the internal resistance of EMF source are very small as compared to the resistance of electrical circuit. So. If internal resistance are included in calculation, then it makes no difference in the result. Therefore, calculations the small internal resistances are of the EMF source are ignored. So, to make the calculation simpler, to make the calculation easier, to make the life of the people so that is so that they they get the real concept of the topic. So they can get the real essence, essence of the topic. So they they get along the interest of the topic. So that's why the internal resistance of the 
EMF source is generally it is not considered. The reason is very simple because it has a very very small effect on the calculation of the result. Normally it is very small in value, so that's why in most of the cases where the values of the resistance are very much small and they're not putting any any large effect on the calculations which we are uh, calculating at the end. So that's the why, that's the reason why we need, we ignore the resistance of uh, uh, such types of the conductors, such types of the EM sources. So if you look at the generally internal resistance of the EMF source are very small as compared to the resistance of the electrical circuit. Electrical circuit is the main area where we are mainly concerned with the resistance suffered by the charges when they pass through that type of the conductor. So they put a huge impact or effect on the performance of the uh, electrical appliances and the flow of the charges which are moving from one end to another end with the help of the energy supplied by the battery. And the source itself has uh, some charges inside that have some smaller amount of the resistance, but that resistance is not playing a very much important role in calculation. So that's why the internal resistance of EMF source means it's a battery, it's a dry cell. These are some of the examples where EMF sources are. So it, it may be a liquid type of the battery, it may be a uh, dry type of the battery. So that's why we, we only concerned with the calculations and we are only concerned with the large resistances which are charge moving from one terminal to another terminal basis. So here it was. We were given, uh, previously we have discussed the, a point, we have discussed two points in this class. Number one point which we have discussed that is, uh, if the amount of the current passing through a conductor is given and maintained at a certain value and through the time and the time through which the, this amount of the current passes, then if we are asked to calculate the how much number of charges have passed through the conductor so we will use the definition of the current and with the same definition we will find out the technique to calculate the charges q as in this formula i is equal to q divided by t it's basic definition of the current how much charges are flowing in a unit time then we have calculated if you know the current and if you know the value of the time, and then you can calculate the number of the charges we have, which have crossed the conductor. So uh, with this, we have learned two uh, main points in this class. That is how to calculate charges if the current and time is given, or it can be used other way. If the charges are given in time through which the charges passes, then we can calculate the amount of the current which have passed. So uh, with this, I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you people have understood the topic. Thank you very, very much.